Hello everyone, this is David Arroyo and welcome to the very first episode of my journey into making comics. This is a brand new thing that I'm doing uh, and it's basically a way to document my journey uh, into making comics, it's as simple as that. Uh, so I'm gonna start today with a bit of an introduction uh, about who I am and talk a bit about my past and how I got to uh, where I am today. And uh, I think it's a good idea because in the you know in the, within the world of comics as of this recording right now I'm kind of a nobody right now not many people know me uh, I've got some followers here and there and that's fine but I think it's the right time to start documenting because I would have loved to have seen what other comic book artists did when they were starting off like the you know the journeys and all that stuff what they've done their struggles and stuff like that and I tend to document these things within these uh, series that I'm making here so um, let's start at the beginning I'm gonna introduce myself uh, and tell everything about how it all started so let's go back to 1986 this is where it all started for me and it was at a time when I looked just like that now that monkey on the left to me was my best friend Clarence at the time so Clarence and I discovered this magical thing called comics and that's exactly what I'm holding in my hand right there. Now it's all shriveled up, and that's because I just used to spill water all over everything. Why? Because when I was three, like my son, could not stay still. And I kept on moving and doing all sorts of stuff that I shouldn't be doing. So anyways, I was clearly in love with what I was seeing. So I moved on to look at comics like this one, which is Mortadelo y Filemon, which is a Spanish comic. I'm Spanish, so you know my parents obviously bought me Spanish books when I was a kid. And uh, then obviously moved on to more famous comics like uh, the Transformers, which are internationally known. Then I ended up picking up stuff like Spider-Man and obviously uh, Masters of the Universe, which I also really loved. I used to have a whole bunch of toys of these. So these type of comics were my foundation. They were the one thing that got me in love with comics. And it didn't stop with only these four. Oh no, I got a whole bunch of them afterwards. And I started getting this massive collection that I still have to this day. So that's where it all started. All right, so having had all these infant years consuming comics, learning about them, reading them, uh, you know, I started doing some comics of my own. Now, these were very, very basic, and unfortunately, I don't have the very early ones anymore. Uh, they either some family members have them or I've lost them along the way. But I still have this one that I made. Um, it's a sketchbook, a, a normal sketchbook. And uh, I made a comic back in 2000, I don't know if you can read it here, um, made by David Arroyo Dance, Dance is my second family name, and 2000, it was called The Awakening Episode 1, uh, The Untold Truth, and I was into uh, Oriental, like, you know, Chinese-Japanese type of symbol, so uh, that was all part of it. Um, and it was, you know, I'll, I'll try to show you some, just so you get an idea of, you know, progress. Uh, let's see if I can show you this properly. So, you know, things looked a little bit like this. No actual depth or anything. Just, you know, this is um, 17 years ago from this day today. Uh, but I still loved comics, you know, so I, I really did create them. I mean, I made all these characters and stuff. And it was, you know, strongly influenced on uh, anime, like manga and stuff like that. The, the eyes were drawn very much like that. I, I had like a lot of interest in, in Japan at the time, like a lot of uh, people, uh, a lot of artists go through a phase like that and some stay in it and get very good at the uh, Japanese manga art style and stuff. But uh, as you can see, you know, I, I worked on this um, you know, day in, day out and made a whole bunch of drawings and kept going and going. And, you know, the funny thing was that the drawings actually started getting better, a little bit better, you know, not, not, not by much. But they started getting better as I, as I drew every day. Um, you know, here, for example, you already started having a little bit of perspective and stuff like that. So it was kind of like a training ground uh, for me in, in the year 2000. In the year 2000, I was around... I think I was around like 16, 17 or something. I don't, I don't remember, but I was still a teenager. And I was basically uh, just, yeah, getting getting into, um, you know, I, I was doing art school at the time. 
and it was all just by, you know all about just improving improving my uh, my my art and it kept going and going you know and I could go like that for a long time and you know it's basically a sketchbook it's not finished I never finished the story uh, but you know it's one of these things that got me started my you know comics has followed me everywhere um, and even the <laughs> everything was hand uh, written and everything so it was it was not professional at all but it was like the training ground so that's what happened around then and then later on uh, I progressed to you know I, I graduated and then I moved on to um, you know start work and stuff like that and that's when I met uh, another young man called Nima Nilian and uh, together with him I uh, made the following few projects so the very first one that I did with uh, Nima Nilian was called Fish and Chips. This was back in 2009 and uh, Nima was responsible for all the line art and I did the uh, story and the colors. So uh, Fish and Chips was eventually a uh, comic book in black and white and it was my first attempt at trying to get things done. It was done in uh, Photoshop and the drawings were drawn by hand. So uh, Nima would draw them just on normal like sheet of papers and then we would scan them in and then I would do the colors over it and the text and all that type of stuff. So it was kind of a dark story. It was about this lady that would wake up uh, in an abandoned factory. She would be naked and with a bag over her head and uh, with no recollection of what happened whatsoever. And then, you know, the story was about her discovering what, uh, yeah, what had happened to her and she would do this with the help of this guy uh, called Chips. So Fish was not her real name, obviously. That was a name that was given to her. The story was really good. It was really not that bad. And as you can see, we also did some uh, designs in color just to see, you know, what, what it would have looked like in color. Um, you know, we had some character designs done. These were all drawn by Nima and colored by me and uh, also obviously for uh, the guy Chips himself um, you know it was a fun project and you know it kept us busy for a few months and we had done I think about 50 pages in total um, and 10 of them were really finished uh, you know in, in black and white but the project just I don't know there was something about the project that either I felt that we weren't ready for it yet, um, or uh, you know, there was just something about it, and it was taking quite some time. So I wanted I wanted to do something a little bit lighthearted, a little bit more child friendly, and that brought us to the other project which we did, which uh, was the Super Elite Team, which was a you know just a working title. It wasn't the official title just yet, but uh, as you can see, it's a completely different art style. All drawings again were done by Nima and uh, I uh, did the story and the colors. So we had this American character, Pro Gun, and then we had this Chinese and the commander. So the Chinese was the opposite, like all self-control. We had a suicide bomber that kept falling asleep. Uh, here is <laughs> the suicide bomber as a kid when he was a child with his family. He became a friend with the American. You know, there was a whole bunch of stuff that was clicking. There's a whole story to it. There, we had an Italian who was extremely corrupt. And uh, we also had this Jamaican who was constantly high out of his mind. Uh, but they all had, like, you know, things in common. They're, oh, here's the builder that I actually drew. It was the only character that I uh, designed. And then here you could see them all together. They were actually like a special elite team of rejects. And here you see the demonstration of two pages, what it would have looked like as a comic. So completely different art style, but still fun. And uh, yeah, that was also, you know, the, the my attempt in 2009. All right, so there we go. That was, uh, that was a bit of my history now. What I do today, uh, you can already see on my YouTube channel anyway, so I'm not going to put this on here again. Uh, you already, you know, just, just flip through the channel and look at the videos. You can see uh, everything that's quite recent. I'm working on two web comics now, uh, which is Immersion and the other one, which is Reset Access Denied. Uh, Immersion is the one that is going for the long haul. Uh, it's also the one that's being developed behind closed doors. I'm not showing too much of that. Uh, and Reset Access Denied is basically uh, a web comic that started as an Inktober project. 
and um, is now basically it has outgrown that because it was way too much work to keep it up as an Inktober project. And uh, now I'm doing this as an ongoing project, and it's about ten pages, so it's a short story. Uh, I do the writing, the the the, the drawing, uh, just everything, basically the whole from beginning to end. And uh, that's also why this is interesting for me to document, because in the next few episodes, I'm going to be talking about uh, the willpower about making comics. So uh, it takes a certain mindset in order to make comics. Uh, that's really something I've learned. Uh, and it's also the reason why these ones from 2009 and the one before never got any further than what they did. It's easy to start a comic. But it's a whole different ball game to continue making it and finish it. So that's uh, that's what we're going to be discussing uh, next uh, in the next episode. And uh, I will see you guys there. Then in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe if you like this type of content. Give it a thumbs up, and uh, I'll see you guys uh, next time. All right, bye bye.